did you see uh, that the scriptures are talking about these end times? Uh, Brother Branham in the message, Shalom, he said, all of the New Testament is speaking of this hour. So that's why I entitled this, The Redemption of the Samaritan Woman Typing the End Time Bride. And uh, I just want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows where each one of us live. And uh, what I find very interesting in this scripture is that um, I was just trying to compare a few things here, scripture and scripture, as uh, I was going through this. And I found out that uh, if you are really seeking God, if you are really in need of seeking God, if you really want him, he will come to you. Amen. 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 He will come to you. Amen. And if you don't want him, he will go away. See that? Amen. Now, uh, if you look at the book of Luke, uh, chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, and uh, I didn't write that, uh, my notes here. Uh, well, you can just type in Luke chapter, uh, the whole of chapter 8. Uh, I just want to show you something there just a little bit in line with uh, what we were just trying to look at. I uh, just want you to see it is, uh, it is important. It is important to uh, just love God and uh, just welcome him. Uh, you just follow with me where you see him so you can just reflect that. Now here, Jesus told the disciples to go on the other side of the sea. And uh, when Jesus was going the other side of the sea, he knew there was a man who was bound the other side of the sea. Amen. And uh, it is interesting that uh, this man was not calling on God, but this man was a seed of God. Amen. Now, a seed of God can never get lost because it came from God. And God, when he comes to the earth... He's looking for his seed. Amen. Amen? So now, if you look at the scripture, you'll see that this man uh, was so possessed by devils that there were so many demons in him. You could imagine demons that drowned about 2,000 big pigs. Just think about that. But all those demons were living in one man. Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion because we are many. You see that? Amen. Now, remember, it was not the man answering or speaking, but it was a demon Amen. answering Jesus Amen. and saying, we are many in here. Amen. His real name was not Legion, but Legion was just a term to mean there were so many demons, a legion of demons Amen. In the man. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You can see the scriptures. There. So now, so what happened here, Jesus, when he went the other side of the sea, and I want you to see this, there was a storm on the sea. Now, if you compare that in the scriptures, you'll find out Jesus, he told the disciples to go across the sea as he dispersed the crowd. And uh, in another gospel, you see, he went to the mountain to pray. And he was watching over his disciples as they sailed to go the other side. But you see, the enemy was watching and he thought that he got the opportunity to kill them. But Jesus came walking on the sea. Amen. Amen. So anyway, uh, he joined them and they went the other side. And uh, he was going to meet this man. This man lived in tombs. You can imagine the condition that the man was in. He was in a terrible condition. Amen. Without clothes. Cutting himself. Shouting. They couldn't arrest the man. They would put chains on him. He would shake the feathers off from his hands. He would get sharp stones and begin to cut himself. 
just see what a demon or what demons can do Amen. to a man. But the God of heaven Hallelujah. was watching over the Amen. condition and everything Amen. the man was going through. Amen. Now, if you listen to what Brabranham said about this man, he said this man uh, was once a good man. And uh, he was a married man with a family, with a wife and children. But one day, he went home and he did. He went away from home and did something that was not right before God. And when he came home, he lied to his wife. You know, uh, maybe I went to work, or you know, there was so much work at, at the place of uh, where I work, so a lot to do. So we just everybody had to sleep there. But the fact is, you didn't sleep there. You went somewhere else to sleep there. Then you come home, you lie to your wife. So right there, a demon enters. Yes. Amen. Now, he went somewhere, maybe take a cigar or a cigarette. Another demon entered. Mm -hmm. He went somewhere, took a drink. Another demon entered. So on and on, on and on. Yes. So demons were entering in one by one. They did not come in at a go. Until the last condition of the man was terrible condition. Amen. That he couldn't wear clothes. So he had to go just to live among the dead. Amen. In tombs. Amen. I can only imagine that signs were posted everywhere. Do not go that way. Maybe a sign of a skull is danger to go that side. Women were warned, men were warned, children were warned. No man goes that way. The psychologists couldn't help the man. The doctors couldn't help the man. The social worker couldn't help the man. He was by himself in the tombs, in the cold season, in the, in the summer seasons and everything. He was in there. But I want you to understand this. Jesus knows what you are going through. Don't you ever think that you are going through a condition that Jesus doesn't know of. If you are a seed of God, you will never get lost. And it doesn't matter what you go through. You may go through hardship. You may go through hard trials. But he's watching over you. And in his own time, he's going to set you free. The man had lost his mind, so he was not looking for God. But the reason why Jesus was looking for him, it was because he was a seed of God. Amen. He was a child of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God will never get lost, brother. I don't care how many times you will backslide. God is going to bring you back. I don't care how many miles you may run away from God. God is going to bring you back. Amen. Remember the story of the prodigal son. He went far away from home. But it came a time when God had to shake the economy of that nation to bring him back home. He came back to his senses and he was resolute. He said, I have to go back to my father. And I remember I told you also that if you look at the older brother, he was at home, but also in a backslidden condition. Amen. Amen. This one went far away from home, backslidden, but one stayed at home, but still far away from his father in a backslidden condition. Amen. You see that? Amen. So Jesus going that side, he was going there because it was time for him to go and set Amen. that man free. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when that man saw Jesus, you see, it is only Jesus who can go that way. Amen. Amen. He's not afraid of any condition. He's not intimidated by anything. Only Jesus can go that way. Aren't you glad that the same one we are talking about is living in you? Amen. No, I just want you to recognize that Jesus is living in you. Amen. And once you recognize that he's living in you, brother, sister, the battle is all won. Amen. Victory Amen. is yours. Yes, For the scripture says, greater is he 
that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. You just need to recognize. You just need to know who you are. Once you know you are a child of God and that Jesus is living in you, then you know all battle have been won on all fronts. And the devil is defeated. And not just defeated, but he's under your feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus engaged these demons. Your time is up. You have to leave. So now the demons begin to beg. See? Demons began to beg. They told Jesus, and they normally say this, I normally say this, that if demons begged, you have that scripture please. I mean, where demons besought him. <laughs> you know, that, that do not send us out of this country. Praise God. Amen. You see, so the demons, they told Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You found that? Hallelujah. You see, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out. No, no, no not that, but it's all right, it's all right. So now the demons begin to ask Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to send them out of that country. Because you see, demons have areas of control. And they want you to know you as a child of God, also you have power to control. Do you pray for the area where you live? Do you tell demons, devil, don't even cross my house. Tell the devil I'm in control of this area. You cannot step in here. Oh, yes. Don't just think it's your house. When you are praying for that area where you live, demons know that's a dangerous area. And in hell, they're talking about you. They're saying, this man, what can we do to stop him from praying? What can we do to stop this man or to make this man backslide? Or this woman backslide? You have to understand this. You are not only in charge of your house, but you are in charge of the area you live. Oh yes. You can lock the drug demons in the area you live. You can lock the demons of prostitution in the area you live. Amen. If you didn't know that, now you know. Yes. Amen. Amen. A few years ago, there was an old lady. We never even talked because she speaks Creole. It's from Haiti. And uh, uh, the daughter is married in the area, so she was living with them at that time. So at night, she was being tormented by devils. And these devils wanted to kill him. To kill her, I mean to say. And, uh, and uh, so it, it, this is in a dream. And she's seeing that demons are coming after. So when she woke up in the morning, she told the daughter, this is the dream I had. And you know the person who saved me? Is that man over there? He came in the night and drove those devils away. They would have killed me. Hallelujah. Well, did I know anything about it? No. no. <laughs> you see that? But I pray for that area. Amen. 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 I let Amen. devils know I'm in charge. Oh, yes. This Amen. is my sphere of influence. Hallelujah. I control this area. Oh, yes. Praise God. You Amen. control. So these demons, Amen. demons also control an area. Amen. You can go to a certain area, you find out like people lose their mind. Amen. There's so many crazy people there. Amen. Mad men and women Amen. on drugs day and night. Amen. Prostitution. Amen. Everything named them is in that area. Why? Amen. Because there are those kind of spirits Amen. that are controlling Amen. the area. Amen. Amen. And it just takes one son of God or one daughter of God 
to go into Amen. that area Amen. and tell the devil now you'll go to another area. Amen. Amen. You'll go to another place mm -hmm. because you can't control this area no more Amen. because I'm here now. Yes. Amen. I'm here controlling this area. And when you pray, Amen. your prayers go up and the demons that are controlling that place in there can't stand Amen. it no more. Amen. So now, the demons begged Jesus. The scripture says, King James, they besought Jesus. They prayed him. They said, do not send us out of this place, out of this country, because this is our area of control. We know every area. We know everybody here. We know how to get things done. Don't send us away. So if Jesus granted them the desires of their hearts, what about you, brother, Amen. sister? Amen. Yes. Amen. How can even those demons can come and tell you no. If you ask him, he'll give it to you. They will tell you, we ask him one day not to send us away. And they said, we want to go to the, to the swans, to the pigs. The demon says, we want you to send us there. Mm -hmm. Because they knew the swans are going to die, but they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. So they will continue just influencing the same area, the same. You see that? Amen. So Jesus gave them leave. But you see, from where the man was and where the pigs were, there, there was nothing physical you could see. But you could see the reaction. You could see the effect. Amen. When demons, remember they were just in one man. But when those demons entered the, the pigs, the pigs knew something strange happened. Amen. Amen. Just think about that. You know, we are supposed to be more sensitive than animals. But you know a whole lot of people receive a demon, but they even don't know about it. Okay, let me just put it this way. If you are nature all the time, you are lying. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's an evil spirit. Amen. Amen. If your desires have nothing to do with God, mm -hmm. remember, that's an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You see that? Amen. But you see, human beings sometimes are not sensitive to these things. Amen. You remember during the time of Eli, El, 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 Mikhail, and he said, I saw a lying spirit. And the false prophet, those prophets of Baal, they thought it was the spirit of God. They couldn't even tell the difference. Mm -hmm. It was a lying spirit. Amen. They're calling a lying spirit the Spirit of God. But watch. When those demons now ran and went to the pigs, the pigs knew that something terrible has happened. So the pigs said, if this is the way I have to feel another day, then I would rather die. I would rather die than be a house where devils will live. Mm -hmm. What about we human beings? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And they went and drowned themselves. Yeah. When people saw what happened, instead of besetting Jesus mm -hmm. to stay there and help them, because this is an area where there are so many devils. But those devils also go into the people and tell them we don't need you. Verse 37. Look at verse 37 now. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. Now, the whole multitude, it does not just say one or two people. 
the whole multitude of the country. Look at that one. What, what was happening in these days? You can just see if we have demons just in one man like that, so what about the rest of the people? And then it's because of these demons in them that they don't want anything to do with Jesus. Amen. Now you and me would think because such a wonderful thing has happened, you would say we need Jesus to help us in the area. Amen. But the scripture says they besought him to depart from them. Amen. For they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again. When you say you don't need him, he just goes back Amen. to where he was from. Amen. Amen. You see that? Amen. Now compare that with John chapter 4 verse 40. I'm just trying to show you here that it is very important for you to have a hunger for God and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm not just saying I need you, but in your heart you don't need him. You need him right deep from the bottom of your heart. You are saying without you, I'm nothing. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. Now look at the difference between these two cities. That? Look at the two cities now. One say we don't need him. And the other one say we need him. And what did he do? He abode there two days. And I told you everything in the scripture even the numbers the numerology of the Bible and everything, even the chapters, the way the number, the numbers you see in the Bible, they mean something. Amen. Those two days are not just two days. This depict what will happen among the Gentiles during the church ages. Amen. 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 And remember when the ages began, at Pentecost, the Christian age began. Amen. Amen. It has been since Christ died, slightly over 2,000 years, Amen. two days. And from there, he's going to the Jews. Amen. Now, when he left Samaria, he went back to the Jews. Amen. 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 Now, remember, he's just about to leave the Gentile age Amen. to go to the Jews. And aren't you so thankful? You remember when Babranam was here? The ministers had organized for meetings in Israel. And they said this, when they see the sign of the Messiah and the things you're doing, they're going to give their lives to Christ. When Babranam was at Cairo Airport in Egypt, a voice spoke to him and told him, do not go to Israel. It's not their time. Amen. So if it's not their time, whose time is it? for you and me. Amen. Amen. He Amen. takes good time to deal with us, Amen. to deal with you. But remember, things will not continue the way they are. Hallelujah. He is going to the Jews. Amen. He just passed this side, Amen. but he's going to the Jews. Amen. He takes a bride from among the Gentiles. And if you look at the scripture, if you look at the scripture here, now the scripture tells us, verse 4, John chapter 4, verse 4, that he must needs go through Samaria. He had to pass our side. Amen? Amen. Because his bride was this side. So he had to pass that way to get you. Praise God. Amen. So now I just want to go a little bit back to give you uh, a little uh, history uh, so that you may understand uh, a few things about the background uh, of this chapter. 
Now, I told you this uh, when I would look at this. That strictly speaking, this terminology a Samaritan. Now, to those of you who read the Bible, you remember they called Jesus a Samaritan. And maybe you may wonder, why, did they, why were they calling him a Samaritan? It simply meant somebody who is not pure, is like a mixture of the Gentiles and the Jews. That's how actually Samaritans came about. So a Samaritan, strictly speaking, would be an inhabitant of the city of Samaria. Now, this terminology changed along the way. But initially, it would be an inhabitant of the city of Samaria. But the term was applied to all people of the kingdom of Israel. Amen? Amen. But remember, along the way, that term changed. Now, after the captivity of Israel in 721 B.C., and in our Lord's time, the name was applied to a people brought to replace the portion of Israelites deported by Shalmaneser. I want you to pay close attention to this so you can catch what it simply means. Uh, you know, what, who a Samaritan is and uh, what exactly was happening between the Samaritans and the, the Jewish people. Because you remember the woman said, why are you asking for water when you know that we have no dealings? Our Samaritans and Jewish people have no dealings. And also I'm a woman of Samaria. Because if you check the history, well, uh, the rabbis, the Jews, would go to the temple and thank God for three things. One, they say, Lord, I thank you so much, Jehovah, that I'm not a slave. Number two, they would say, I thank you, Lord, I'm not a publican, and I'm not a woman. That's how they would pray. <laughs> you know, so the woman was very su surprised that this is a Jew talking to me, me, a woman of Samaria. So you have to understand what was what is the background of this chat. Amen. See that? Amen. Now, if you look at Second Kings seventeen twenty four, the scripture says this: "And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Kutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from uh, uh, Sepharve, and placed them in the city, the cities of Samaria." instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. You see, what would happen is that Israel, because uh, they would digress or disgrace God, so God would send other nations. God would use Assyria God would use uh, uh, Babylon to come and punish Israel. Amen. Why? Because they knew the truth. Amen. But they were not living as children of God, yet God called them and God gave them his truth. Amen. So now I want you to understand this. That whenever these nations would exile Israel, not everybody would actually leave the land. There's some that would be left in the land. You see that? Yeah. And then, like for instance, in this case, the Syrians or the Babylonians, some of them would come to control that land yeah. and would mix with the Jews who were left. Yeah. Marrying and all that. So this is how this group came up called the Samaritan. So now, you can see they were not considered as a pure race to the Jewish people. Maybe you may ask, but why would they send? You see, a lot of wild animals 
you know, when pe where pe people don't live, you see a lot of wild animals coming in. So uh, at this moment of time, we had a lot of wild animals now. So they said, no, they have to send some people over there who want to go there, where there's a Jew or where there's a, a Syrian and all that to go and occupy the land. So there was that complaint, and the Assyrian, the king, had to send uh, dispatch some people to go to the land. Now, among the people who were dispatched was uh, a, a priest. And this priest, he was to teach the people of the land about the God of the land. So you can see they knew about God. Amen. Amen. And um, if you read a little bit about the Samaritans, they believed in the five books of Moses. But they did not believe the rest of the books of the Old Testament. But they just believed in the five books of Moses. So this priest, you know, helped them to teach them about the teachings of the God of the land so that they can live well in the land. So this is how these people came to fear the Lord God of Israel. And they knew the Messiah would come one day. Remember, Moses had said there will be a prophet who will be like unto me. God will send them to you. So now, uh, I want you to understand because of the heathen background, the majority of them did not live holy, the worship of idols. They would, uh, just like uh, Christians today, mm -hmm. there are many people who say they are Christian. But if you look at the way they live, it's like they, they are in the world, yeah. they are also in the church. Yeah. You see, they just live like the people of the world. And then also they come to church, they sing songs of Zion, they can preach, they can do all things a Christian can do, and they can go outside there and just do anything a non-believer can do. Then that means a person like that is worshipping foreign gods and at the same time worshipping God. But God doesn't want that. He wants you to worship him and him alone. You see that? Amen. So they did not throw away their idols. So when Judah returned from Babylonian captivity, they desired to assist in rebuilding the temple at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Remember when Judah was now let go, according to the word of God, these people desired to help mm -hmm. the Jewish people to build their temple. On being refused, they became openly hostile. The feud grew more intense until about 409 BC when Manasseh, a man of priestly lineage, on being expelled from Jerusalem by Nehemiah for an unlawful marriage. This was tough. Because the way you married, you didn't marry right. You're marrying a heathen. They expelled this man. <laughs> you know, from Jerusalem. This was during the time of Nehemiah. And this man, Manasseh, found uh, refuge with the Samaritans and obtained permission from the Persian king to build them a temple at Mount Gerizim. Now, where Jerusalem was and where this temple was, it was like 40 not 40 miles away. So he is the one that helped the, the, uh, the Samaritans build their temple and Mount Gerizim. So this is the reason why in the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, you see the woman said our fathers worshipped. He, she did not say our father worshipped but worshipped. Why? Because the temple at Mount Gerizim had been destroyed about 150 years ago. But still, whenever Samaritan would be, if they wanted to pray, they would face where their temple was. 
but it was destroyed. So they will face that mountain. So she says, our fathers worship in this mountain. And she said that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So remember by this time, the temple wasn't even there. Now, if you read, we're not reading, but if you just read John chapter 4, verse 20 to 24, in conjunction with Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 2, we realize that God would not permit the people of the law to sacrifice the feast of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles in just any of the places he had given them to sacrifice in the days gone by. The reason is Jerusalem was chosen. That was the center where God wanted everything to be done actually at Jerusalem. Amen. Now if you look at how the children of Israel, how they were moving from Egypt, remember I said there were 42 camps. You know like they would reach somewhere camp. They would be there for a couple of months. And then when they, God would speak to Moses, and uh, from uh, the, the pillar of fire or cloud, and then when the, pe the, the people would be told to get ready, and then after that, they would the pillar of fire or cloud move, then the people would begin to move. So if you count from Egypt to the promised land, we had 42 camps. See that? But this camp, the wilderness was not the destination. Where we are right now is not our destination. Amen, amen. Our dis destination is to go to God. Oh, yes. Our destination amen. is the rapture. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You haven't arrived yet. You haven't arrived yet. So don't think it's over. No. We are still pressing forward. Oh, yes. amen. 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 So their final destination of rest was to be at Jerusalem. You remember... The Ark of the Covenant was at one time at Shiloh, but that was not the final destination still. It was to be placed at Jerusalem. Amen. So God chose Jerusalem to be a place where he would put his name. Amen? Amen. That is where everything was to be done. Where the temple was. But remember now, you are the temple of the Holy God. Amen. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. You don't have to go anywhere. Because Christ is found in his word. Amen, amen. And God has placed his name Hallelujah. in his word. Amen. amen? amen. So if amen. Jesus is in you, you become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. So in the days of Jesus, Jerusalem was the current and the only place where God would meet. His people. Amen? Amen? Now, you see, three times in a year, all adult males had to assemble to observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread and that's at Jerusalem, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. It was at the place where God had chosen. Amen. Not just anywhere else. God will meet us in his word. You know, I liked it when Brother Abraham said this, you know, well, I want to show you that you can get something from God wherever you are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So you don't reach a point and think that God is in a such a such a location or with so and so alone. And that's why I told you, I'm trying to empower you Amen. to know that you can lock any demon any time. Yes, sister, you can. Amen. To those of you who are here in the prayer time, I said this. You know, sometimes you may think God is with the pastor or God is with brother so and so and brother so. No, God is with every one of you. Amen. I want you to know that. Amen. And the one to empower you to know that God is with you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this sister feels has an urge Amen. to pray.
pray for this child. But remember, he is a brother and preaching. And uh, where you feel like, well, now, you see, we are just a little down there. But there's something burning in the heart of this sister. And uh, there was um, a sister there who had brought a child that was very sick. And one of the prophet to pray. And uh, this sister tried to push it away. Tried to push it away. And, you know, let the man of God pray. And, you know, it is like it just didn't leave her. So I had to look for a way of talking to that sister. So sister, could you sit here and can I just hold your baby a little bit like real, you know, just like saying a little word of prayer for your child? And the sister said, sure. And gave the baby to the sister. And that sister just prayed a simple prayer and gave back uh, the child. So I did not mean to take the place of the man of God, but you know, I just felt. And after that, she felt good in herself. It was God that was speaking to her. And you know, sometimes things happen like that. Yeah. That you you feel you just want to read the Bible. Amen, but you say, oh, I have no time to read the Bible. Not now. But you still just want to read the word of God. Amen, amen. You know, listen to that voice. Amen, amen, amen. Listen to that amen, voice. Amen. Or you just feel just need to kneel down and pray. Yes. Listen to that voice. Yes. Amen. Listen to that voice. Sometimes you just feel like you just want to go to the house of God and just kneel down yes. and just tell them, listen to that voice. Amen, amen, amen. Or even amen. in your house, if it's not, but they just feel like you just want to yeah. worship God, listen to that voice. Yes. Amen. 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 So now, when that sister now was bringing the child yeah. to Brabranham, Brabranham sees a vision and says, sister, your child was healed when that sister prayed for your baby. Amen, amen. Just think about that. When that sister over there prayed for your child, mm -hmm. that was when the child got healed. Amen. So you see, sister, you can. Yes. You can lock any demon. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh, yes. First, you must know who you are. Yes. That you are a daughter of God. Yes. Amen? Amen? And the daughter of God does not live like the daughters of the world. No. You must know that. Yes. And you must know God is with you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Then after that, you must know that you have the power. Hallelujah. You have the authority Amen. from the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. oh, and then you can yes. lock Amen. any demon Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, so I want you to to, sh to have faith and confidence Amen. in God. Oh, yes. That whenever there is a need, Amen. you don't have to travel to go as to a certain country because God is in this church. Amen? Amen. 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 God is here. Yes. Amen. God is in your house. Yes. Amen. God Amen. is in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen? Praise God. He said... I will be with you, Hallelujah. even in you, Amen. after the end of the earth. Amen. Was he talking to a pastor or a preacher? No. no. He was talking to all of his children. Amen. And because God calls you as an individual, Amen. when he calls you, he comes to live in you. Amen. And when he lives in you, when you speak, it is deity speaking through you. Amen. Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Hallelujah. Whosoever. <laughs> Praise God. That means you can say to the mountain. Hallelujah. You can speak to the mountain. And when you do so, it is not really you speaking. It is deity because he said, I will be in you. Amen. You line up with heaven. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So remember, we are under the blood of Jesus. Yes. Outside the blood of Jesus, every one of us is guilty. Amen. Amen. What gives your voice is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Without the blood of Jesus, we are all dead. Amen. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Amen. You remember when the dead angel was passing, his, when Israel was in Egypt? 
Because when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. So if there was an Egyptian somewhere listening, and here Moses saying, you have to do this, and go kill a lamb, they won't die. <laughs> because they, they, they've just done exactly what God wanted to see. The dead angel could not go in that blood. will pass over. Amen? Amen? So the only place God will meet the believer in this day is in his word. Amen. In his predestinated word Hallelujah. that is fulfilling Amen. at this end time. When the Samaritans had their temple, they looked to themselves uh, as more superior than even them at Jerusalem. They felt that their temple was even more important than even the temple at Jerusalem. And remember, they also used to sacrifice at the Passover too. They used to do all those things according to the five books of Moses. See that? Amen. They used to worship. They used to say the Messiah will come one day. That priest had taught them that the Messiah will come one day. Praise God.